Welcome back to Redneck's Dirty Hands. I'm Pete. We got the uh, Sidewinder back in the shop. We're going to do a few things to it. Uh, I'll walk you through what we're going to do and a couple of the small things I did off camera. Well, one of the things I did was uh, JP found he got that uh, GPS mount or phone mount off a fella. He was going to put it on his Sidewinder, but he ended up getting another one that clamped onto the handlebars there. So he gave this one to me because downloaded a couple of different apps you can use with your phone for the GPS and uh, data logging for uh, doing the drag racing you know zero to 60 eighth mile quarter mile 30 foot 60 foot all that stuff so but I had no holder with my phone so it wasn't really working all that good so I found a piece of uh, aluminum plate and I've just got it sandwiched and clamped to the fire riser there so it works pretty good and then sitting on the machine you know got your phone gps unit sitting in here i still got clear line of sight to my boost gauge my afr and i can still see my rpm and all the info there so i mean when I got the race tune and all that i still got all my gauges instrumentation i can look at but then also with the Turbo dynamics. when you get off of the race tune or whatever, you could have the data logger going with your phone. So you could just mount your phone in there and uh, that way you get all your information from there. But uh, turned out pretty good. All right, well, one of the main things we want to do is uh, take this original inch and a half track off and we're gonna put the one inch track. I got that off of uh, a fella. Uh, that's off uh, SRX, so that's a one inch track should be good we want to go over 130 mile an hour you need the one inch track for high speeds so everybody says so even though this sucker here tracks like new it's got 144 studs in it but over at Ian's just spins like crazy gets no traction uh, 300 feet I was able to hit 88 mile an hour with this bad boy but uh, we've got no traction so I think if she hooks up she'll uh, get well over 90 mile an hour the old T cat there she still holds the record over there so far. I mean, it's running 91 mile an hour over there and it's got gears in it for the long haul. So I'm surprised, but it's just a 121. I do have 192 uh, studs and chisels in this guy. So it actually does hook up and pull pretty good. So we're not gonna be putting chisels in this one. We're just gonna run trail studs. Uh, we did wanna run the snowmobile in uh, spec one turbo class you know you got to keep it all stock suspension stock trail studs and stuff like that so you know see what we can do who knows we also gonna i got some gears i want to swap uh in the chain case we got to do an oil change i got new sliders for it uh, i do have a fourth wheel kit probably gonna put on it um but uh yeah so we're gonna be running probably gonna start off even though we want to go for the speed runs, you know, typically the higher speeds, you don't want to run a crazy amount of studs. But we're going to start off with, I'm going to put 192 just like I have in the T-cap. And then if we find that uh, makes the track too heavy or it's scrubbing some speed, we can always take half of them out, you know what I mean? So we still end up with some traction, but uh, that's going to be the plan. So we'll get this uh, torn apart. We'll do get it ready for swapping the track and... When the studs come in, we'll start uh, drilling and studding the track, and we'll show you that and carry on. All right, so we're going to start by pulling the side panels off. The uh, side winders and the Articats, uh, they're pretty simple. They just got the two little knobs. Give them a click. Pull it off. Whole panel comes right off. So now, same thing on the other side. One here. One over here, give it a little lift, pull, comes right off. Tickety boo. All right, we got the panels off, so now we'll lift her up. We got this lift from uh, the Mac tool guy. We picked up two of them, we got this one and the other one. That one's kind of been a bench for a while now, but uh, works pretty good. Lifts about a thousand pounds or so. All right, so it's up on the lift to make it easier. What I'm gonna do is, uh, I'll grab my cherry picker, I'll bring it over, hook it up to the back bumper, lift that guy up. And then, uh, it's not too bad, really. I mean, we'll uh, loosen off the back axle and then uh, 
we'll drop all the suspension bolts. The front bar, I'm pretty sure the rail's slotted, so it just kind of hooks in there. We might have to take the front bar out anyway, but uh, we might drop the springs to relax that to get a little bit more space to make it easier in and out. But then we'll also have to uh, get up here, we'll pop. There's uh, some Torx bolts holding the foot plate and the panel in here, so we'll take those guys all out and undo the uh, two five sixteenths in here on this side so we can get at the uh, drive shaft on that side because we're going to be pulling the track and everything out and then on this side same thing we're going to be doing an oil change on it as well so there's a inspection plate uh, there's a guard on this one off to take it off and then there's an inspection plate underneath I'll undo so I can gain access to the oil filter and the drain plug there then there will be a drain down here on the bottom to drain out this tank. We're not going to undo the oil tank from the chain case cover. Uh, we're going to be going after all these uh, black headed torques. Uh, not these ones here. We're going to leave this attached. So we'll drain the oil. Drain the take the chain case right off. We'll leave it intact because we're going to be doing the oil change the chain case. I want to swap some gears in there. We'll get the track changed. There's the one going on it. Still waiting on the studs and everything for that, but uh, we'll uh, get going. So I pulled all four main suspension bolts out. Now I'm not 100% sure if you have to pull this bar out. I mean, the front of the suspension is just slotted so it hooks over top of that bar. But I don't know, I'm here by myself today and I don't know if there's enough room if you relax everything, if it just pulls off of there or not. So because I'm by myself, what I did was uh, I undid the springs relax them and then all I do is uh, take the spring and just flip her forward the other way so it's not hanging down the other way and then now I can slide the uh, skid out hopefully get some of this stuff out of the way and basically just uh, Sure the spring stays up in there. Okay, this is one of the jobs that it's a real pain in the butt when you're by yourself. The track keeps getting caught on all the wheels and everything, so you gotta keep lifting it up and pulling it back. And once you get it free from the track, you just slide it out like so. And there she be. So, there's the skid out. So now we can check all of our wheels. I'm going to replace the uh, sliders on it and then we're going to get rid of the uh, factory uh, tri hub in the center there. I'm going to put on a kit there I got from Billy, the fourth wheel kit. So we'll swap that out while we're doing it. And then now we can uh, lower this back down a bit and then we'll get the uh, drive shaft out of it and get that track out of there. So I pulled the, uh, the drain bolt out. It's the number five Allen head with the copper washer on there. Got that drained. And then the oil filter, she was on there pretty tight. I, uh, you can see the wrench just crushed it trying to get it off. But uh, we got her off and then uh, picked up the 
yam lube oil change kit from uh, Blackstock Motorsports there. So, <laughs> it's a pretty handy den. I never bought an actual oil change kit from them before, but it comes with a nice little paper funnel. Four liters of your 040 yam lube. Oh, I should open this first. Comes with the pair of gloves. Keep your hands clean. Oh, oh it comes with a new uh, copper crush washer there for the drain plug. That's a nice one. Should be an oil filter in here somewhere. So there's the new oil filter. So not bad kit. I forget what it cost. It wasn't... Uh, crazy expensive but I mean it wasn't I don't I don't think it was too cheap I mean you are getting four liters of 040 synthetic oil which you know that stuff's probably over 10 bucks a liter right there but uh, yeah handy dandy little kit oh. thought maybe it would have come with a yam lube sticker maybe not so we'll spin the new filter up on there and then I'll put the uh, drain plug back in and then I'm uh, going to have to drain this now it's kind of a dumb spot how they got that because there's no uh, access in the bottom of the belly pan here to drain this guy so what I did was I have got a piece of uh, one of those pieces of aluminum channel I had I just cut it down so it made a little angle and then I'm going to take that drain bolt out and I'm going to Slide that up in there so it'll drain down that little trough. I'll put the drain pan over here and hopefully we don't make a huge mess. All right, so I've got uh, the oil drained on both sides. Now it sucks the uh, way they've got this set up for draining this guy. I mean, there's no way around it. You're Even though you got a nice looking sled, you're going to get oil in the bottom, but... Uh, that is what it is, I guess. To hit it with a little bit of brake clean or something, wipe it out. So that's all done. I went ahead and I took this one pipe that goes from here up into here. Just because it holds, there's no way of draining that oil out of there. So I figured, you know, I'm in here, might as well take it out. Get as much of the old oil out as you can. And then same thing, drop that hose off and let that hose drain out. So now we are undoing all the black the back bolts off of the uh, cover I took the uh, reverse motor out just undid the three bolts pulled it straight out and then you have your uh, spring and your lock pin and then the motor or the gear that the motor drives just slips in there just uh, it was sitting with the uh, detent in the middle so just when you go to put it back together Make sure everything goes back the same way. So now we just got to uh, hopefully wiggle the chain case off of there and we should be in business. Oh, I should pull this screw out of here too. I bought this little kit with all these Torx adapters and everything off of the Worth Tool Guy years ago, and it is a fantastic little kit. It's got almost every little bit you can think of. Torx and Allen keys and screwdriver bits and tamper-proof ones. Let me get this off. This might flex out the, yeah, that's what we need. Just like so. Oh, little washer, thrust washer stayed in here. That would have been sitting up on there like so. So we don't want to lose track of where anything goes in here. And then we can have a look and see. Oh. 
sloppy. It looks pretty sloppy in there. I'm not sure if that's uh I think the spec on the tensioner for these is I think you're supposed to put it in finger tight and then back it off one and a half turns, which could be what that is, but I mean that just seems gross. I might tighten that up when I put it back together. But everything looks pretty good in here. This reverse one. Hmm, I guess that is what it is. That seems uh that seems pretty bad too. Huh. Uh-oh. Well we'll pull this all off anyway and uh carry on. So, there's the drivers out of there. That's a huge assembly going on. But uh, basically, you've got your plate on the back side of the left side there. You undo the three bolts, separates it from the caliper assembly there. So you just kind of, you can wiggle that and pull it out of the way. Pull the rotor off as well. And then on the other side, the chain case side, you know, all we had to do was, uh, well, pulled the reverse set up off and the chain set there and then pulled the top sprocket and the bottom sprocket off. And then uh, everything pushes out to the left side. Pulled the big old drive shaft out of there and then the track is now. Out of there. Gandhi, nice one. So we've got some room up in here. Might be a few little things to address and fix up. These drive sprockets are massive. They're just a nine tooth. The regular uh, nine tooth, like what the 2000 T cat, all those old 121s and all that, are quite a bit smaller. So I've got 10 tooth drivers in that guy and they'd be like the same size as these so right out of the gate I can understand why these sidewinders are pretty quick out of the box just because of the drive sprockets are so being the 286 pitch with a 9 tooth these sprockets are bigger than a 252 9 tooth so it actually makes these like a 10 tooth driver so pretty cool all right well while the track's out I figured I'd uh, test fit my new gear set in there just to make sure the chain was gonna fit okay max is out the uh, adjuster bolt almost all the way which is a little sketchy but yeah, it should be all right now I've got the track out we're gonna stud it <laughs> we ordered the studs there online royal distributing you know you can't uh, with the lockdown or whatever the crap that's going on it's a curbside pickup only, which takes forever. You call them on the phone, takes forever to get through them. So order them online. Wanted 192 studs, inch by 1.75. And apparently, we counted them out. They sent us 157 of the ones we want. And then they sent us, the, I think, 33 of the ones we don't want. These ones are the 1.075, so they're shorter, and I think if you can tell, I don't know if you'll be able to pick that up. Oh, they are even a different color. That one's a little more brassy colored or goldy. That one's dull. The dull ones are the ones we want. Those ones aren't, so that's just lovely. So we're going to have to try and figure out to get those switched out. They even shorted us two, you know. They didn't send us enough. But anyway, I uh, went ahead and I drilled all the holes in the uh, new track there. I picked up 
This originally was a, a, a Woody's track template for the 137s, but uh, she's a Redneck's Dirty Hands template now because I went and laid out my own grid and popped my own holes in for our own pattern. Hopefully it'll give us a, a good aggressive uh, grip. Now you can see this one here is a, she's a big lug full of studs, but uh, we're switching to this guy. See how much shorter the lug is? This is a one inch track. That's what we want for speed. So we're gonna load it right up with studs. Now we don't, doing the high speed runs, you know, too many studs could be a bad thing. You know, you're adding a lot of weight and uh, whatnot to the track could end up slowing you down. So I think what we're gonna do is we'll fill it with the studs so we get the traction. And then as we get doing the runs, if we're not uh, able to meet the speeds that we can, maybe we'll pull half of the studs out. We'll still have 96 studs in there with the pattern if we pull half of them out, which should be enough, you know, traction on, you know, the ice. So, you know, once you get rolling for a long pull, so we'll see that. But first, before I put the studs in there, you know, everybody that runs the lake runs triggers because... They're the lake racing stud, you know, but that's a trigger there. I kind of buggered up the tip on it. I was testing its durability. So I think what we're going to do, or what I'm going to, I know what I'm going to do, is these are gold diggers that I got. They have the same, a trigger has a 60 degree carbide hardened tip. Gold diggers have a 60 degree hardened tip. A trigger is about five dollars a stud. A gold digger is two fifty. So, yeah, I'm gonna be redneck cheap, and I'm gonna sit there, and I'm gonna chuck these guys up in the lathe, and I'm gonna trim them. I already did this one as a test, and I profiled it the same as the trigger. So, I mean, yeah, it's gonna take an hour or so to uh, sit there and turn all these to have the profile of the triggers, but uh, you end up with the same result, you know, the, uh, a cheaper stud gives you the same profile and penetration that the uh, trigger will for half the cost, just some time. So, let's get uh, chucking them up in the lathe. There's uh, one turned down. So I forgot. I'm on number 10 right there. Still got all these to go, so I'm just going to clip till when I'm done. All right, so that is a box of 157 gold diggers turned down to be like triggers. Well,. My original idea of doing this and my guesstimation of it taking an hour was not uh, not quite accurate. It took a little over two hours to do that, and that's not all of them because we need to swap out 35 of them because they gave us the wrong one. So, yeah, but, hey, you know, saving a bit of money and spending a little bit of time, I guess, right? <laughs> nice one.
the uh, skid back in, the new tracks all on there. She is nice and prickly. Those babies turned out perfect, nice and sharp. Now, I struggled to get that skid back in by myself and the track. Highly recommend if you plan on doing a job like this, make sure you got a buddy kicking around because it is a pain in the ass. And to make things worse, I got this, uh, I think my birthday last year or whatever, Billy uh, gave me the fourth wheel kit off of his uh, Articat 9000 there because he was going a different route or something like that, upgrading. So I was like, ah, well, I got it all out. I'll uh, take out the tri-hub and I'll put this guy in. And I realized this kit the wheels are smaller, the tri-hub, the wheels are eight inch. This one was uh, just around seven inch. So I don't want that, I wanted to stick with the big wheels. So I ended up taking it all apart, but I didn't want to have to take the skid out to do it, which I tell you, she's uh well, there's a busted knuckle there. It's a pain in the butt. There's not really a lot of room to uh, get those inside wheels out when the track and the skid's in there. But I, uh, stubborn, bullheaded, I uh, struggled and did it myself anyway, and then I ended up, I made my own big wheel kit for the T-Cat. I got eight inch wheels on it. I customized the rails there so I could get the bigger wheels on it. So I had two extra, just regular plastic eight inch wheels. So I put the tri-hub back in the middle and then I used the outer uh, ends for his uh, fourth wheel kit and put them on. So that way I have four eight inch big wheels on it. So the bigger the wheels on it, the better for high speed runs. I mean, the real serious, uh, really fast drag race guys and all that. I mean, they got bigger wheels than that. So, you know, stick with it that way for now anyway. And then uh, I got to clean it all up. I got, uh, <laughs> grease all over everything got the oil change back in that went all all that went good so I wanted to test it out but uh, it's not really snowing it's kind of raining out right now so hopefully the weather gets better and we can give this a test but I'm interested to see what uh, this track with the uh, nice sharp studs on there will do and uh, I left uh, all the outer ones because they did short us 35 studs i think so i just left the uh, outside ones out so we can just come back in after the fact and just pop them in nice and easy that way so other than that the oil change went great gear swap went good all that jazz so uh yeah we are uh, good to test it out the next time we have decent conditions to go testing all right, well, thanks for tuning in. Uh, job went all right, I guess. You know, it was a struggle doing it by yourself, but uh, sometimes it's what you got to do. We're in lockdown and all that jazz, so it is what it is. But uh, I was hoping we could end this video with the uh, test rip to see what that thing will do over at Ian's in the 300 feet, and then we want to get it out on the lake and see if, uh, you know, the 137 on the side of the tunnel is just advertising the track size or the mile an hour. So... We'll see what happens, hopefully. You know, weather permitting, it's raining out right now, so it's not very good for uh, <laughs> snowmobiling, but uh, hopefully soon we'll uh, get it out for a rip and hopefully everything that we've just done here uh, pays off. So thanks for watching. If you like the uh, channel, hit the like button, subscribe, turn the notification bell on, and take it easy, guys.